the final topic that I want to touch upon when it comes to post-processing or things that we want to do with the results, with the predictions once we have them, and that is related to evaluation actually. So here we have a slide that shows us how to construct confidence intervals. This is just an example, an example of 1000 data points in total. And out of those 1000 data points, we're going to set 100 aside for testing. So 900 data points remain for training the model. And then we're going to use the trained model to create predictions for the 100 test data points that we have. And let's say we're calculating the difference in proportion of predicted labels. So this is just a placeholder metric. And obviously you could substitute this with any other measure that you want to calculate confidence intervals for. So now how we're going to actually construct the confidence intervals. In the previous slide, we've only shown a trained model and the prediction for 100 data points. Well, we're going to resample from those 100 data points and we're going to resample with replacement. So that means once we've sampled a data point, we're actually going to put it back. We can think about this as a bag full of data points. We pull one out that we're going to create a prediction for, but then we're also going to put it back in the bag. So next time when we choose the data point that we want to analyze next so that we want to create the prediction for next, the one that we just used a moment ago would become available again. So it could be that you have the same record multiple times and we're going to sample 100 times. So once again, we're going to have 100 data points in total that we're going to create predictions for. So we're going to calculate DPPL again now on all of these data points and we're going to repeat this K times. And the idea is now that if we have a sufficiently large value of K, we should obtain a normal distribution of the DPPL values. And using that normal distribution, we can now build confidence intervals. For a normal distribution, we know the area under the curve, so we can construct confidence intervals to our liking. And the general threshold that's commonly used will be 95%. In the context of fairness, we want to actually construct confidence intervals per group as well, and then see how much they overlap. And maybe we would observe that one interval has a much bigger spread than the other confidence interval. Assuming now that we have two groups, and obviously we can also repeat this for multiple groups in the data set.